Hi, so I'm Andy Doss. And I'm Andrew Round. There you go. Our main uh, project for the year is the Maranatha EV Charger Master Plan. Um, and yeah. Okay, so last year, Maranatha CAD 3 started a project called G2035, which is the goal to make Maranatha completely renewable, or at least very highly renewable, by the year 2035. So what we want to do is to continue that legacy started last year and help improve Maranatha by making it even more eco-friendly than it already is. And our, of course, our solution to this is implementing EV chargers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some quick terms. There are three types of like emissions that Maranatha, Maranatha has to deal with. Scope one, two, and three. So scope one, immediately from the building. So we're talking about like the kitchen, like our vans, our buses, those that come directly from Maranatha. Second is like slightly indirect, like the electricity we use. Well, the CO2 is not produced here. It's like produced in the, you know, facilities that produce our electricity. It is consumed here, and we can directly change that by like implementing solar panels. And third is like outside of Maranatha, outside of our control, or not really outside control, but more outside of control compared to scope two and scope scope one. So this is stuff like transportation. So the EV charger program primarily focuses on scope two and scope three because if we implement these chargers there will be less people driving gas vehicles reducing our scope three emissions but also will increase our scope two emissions because we have to use more electricity. Hi, here's a little bit more of a breakdown. We can see company facilities and company vehicles going directly to scope one. While scope two, slightly indirect, is like, you know, kind of the slightly related stuff, electricity, production, closely related. But scope three is like very indirect, you know. Like just more like planes for international students, stuff like that. Okay, and then of course, since we're talking about how oh, you want to? Yeah, I can get this one. So the um, the big reason why we're kind of doing a push for this is California instated a new law by 2025, or by in this case 2025, but more of a close in future 2035 for our plan. By 2025, there's the halt of all new production vehicles that will be gas powered. All new vehicles sold in California that are brand new have to be electric. So a good way to get ahead of this curve and this sort of kind of supply chain problem, if let's say faculty or um, a lot of more students are using electric cars and they need to charge them on campus. It would be very, very, very vital if we're not the plans ahead for this, like implementing EV chargers. Okay, so our pro what we identified and have already covered is that Maranatha has a lack of EV chargers. Um, we know that some faculty and some students have already have electric vehicles, yet we still do not have a place to charge them. And Marinetha, sorry. <coughs> Don't I'll take it. I'll take the phone. Sorry. You're very sick. Oh my God. Um, so the problem is that faculty and students don't have a place to charge them. And just in case Marinetha wants to expand on this by possibly making their vans electric, it would be a very good and very important thing to have is EV chargers. Because once a lot of cars become an electric, EV chargers are going to start going up in value because this could be more of a need and demand for them. And there's also been a little bit supply chain issues right now, so they put to be very important for Maranatha to get ahead of this. Okay, so we did some research into how much like carbon dioxide we will be saving by like switching and implementing the EV charger. So we calculated that per one full charge of an electric vehicle with like an average range of 250 to 300 miles, we'd be saving. 702 uh, kilograms of CO2. Uh, this is an average around the board, taking into account like gas and production and everything that goes into contributing CO2 into gas and electric cars. And there's a house for scale. So here we can see how much CO2 per kilometer driven. So electric vehicles, <coughs> 75 grams compared to ca uh, gas cars at 241. So incentivizing electric vehicles will be a significant drop in pollution for
for Maranatha and for California. Um, I also have this nice little visual graph about um, like CO2 emissions over time. So down here it might be a bit hard to see. We can see for the first 20,000 miles, gas cars actually outperform electric cars in terms of CO2 emissions, mainly because the factors of production for electric cars is very CO2 intensive. But then, after those 20,000 miles, gas cars, with their consumption of like petrol and other you know, fuels, rapidly emits way more CO2. And by the end of their lifetime, are producing 55 like thousand tons of CO2 compared to electric vehicles, like slightly above fifteen thousand. Uh, here's another breakdown. We'd see over a lifetime a minus six uh, sixty nine percent drop in EV uh, or emissions using EV vehicles. So our main research question is how how do we implement these EV chargers onto Maranatha campus and how do you even, what's our first step and what do we need to do? So, we were discussing a lot of possible solutions and these were the three companies we kind of reached out to that were very practical for us. So Tesla, of course, leading company in EV chargers, but in our situation, in our price stance, $75,000 per charger, and this is level two to level three chargers, is a little bit out of our Maranatha budget, even though they're the most of course, known to be reliable and to you know, advance with all their EV charging and the, have the biggest network across the U.S., it's not financially viable. ChargePoint was our number two choice. Um, this is more of like a mid-range type of EV charger. You can see it more of this adapts to more commercial vehicles, a lot of transit vans and stuff like that use this type of EV charger. But a result that we found in a company that we discovered that we were never expecting to was a company called Blink. And our big tie-in factor is they work with a company called Zebex. Zebex is the leading company to converting gas-powered vehicles to EV vehicles. And also it does help that Blink has the most affordable, most reliable, and they're located in California for maintenance and repairs and stuff like that. So... I kind of already did the minor summary, but again, Tesla is a very good company. No, no dissing them at all. I mean, they're a leading company in the field, and they, of course, advanced over two to three years ahead of most companies. But this is just very expensive for Maranatha, and it doesn't really seem viable because there's chargers charge up as fast as two to three hours, but faculty are going to be here around five to six, maybe even seven hours a day. What's probably about thousand dollars. Uh, charge point again. We were kind of leaning more into them, but we had some communication errors and a lot of distance between um, trying to reach them. Their installation process per EV charge, as we found across the board, is three weeks. That is the minimum. And of course, this is talking about digging in, digging in the ground, connecting the generators and stuff like that. But um, our choice for EV charger would be the CT series between $1,900 to $9,000. But looking into the company more and more, the kind of more commercial use you see them at like supermarkets, stuff like that, not really at schools. Blink, though, is a factor that already have integration in certain colleges. Um, we, know some can, we know some Cal States that use Blink, EV chargers, you know, Cal State LA uses them, and even San Diego State already uses Blink chargers. Our two chargers are, that are really surprisingly affordable for the market is actually $800 for a single charger and a, a dual charger for around $1,000. Our financial outreach programs is a great way to save money for Maranatha. You know, budgets are a little bit tight right now. So if we contact the Pasadena Water and Power, they are willing to give Maranatha around $1,300 to $3,000 per charger. They'll cover installation fees, they'll cover maintenance fees, and this system would be very financially viable for Marianne if you are planning to upgrade in the future. One problem that we did, we both did come in contact with, was talking to companies, trying to reach out to them. A big struggle was a lot of companies don't really want to talk to a bunch of high schoolers <laughs> about implementing EV charters, but um, I actually had to go down to City Hall and talk to them in person 
to even get this type of proposal, which is still currently in the works. <coughs> Installation, like we said, around two, uh, two to three weeks. It will be covered by um, the passing outreach if it's existing. Uh, if we have an existing 240 volt power source, the cost will be low, which we already do have a man off the campus and on our lower parking lot. But if we didn't, of course, they'd have to install generators and just the whole process would just be very time consuming. But due to Maranatha's solar installation, and we have a good power network, and we're only practically you know, around the corner from modern power, it does help with installation costs. I think we saved around $850 around that per charger. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, a quick prerequisite before we install anything, we would want to get the Maranatha electrical system looked at again because EV chargers can put a great strain onto the grid into electrical system. If Maranatha's like grid is not prepared for the EV chargers, a lot of damage can be caused. So it would be good to get a professional from maybe like Bessie or Water and Power or Blink to come in and survey Maranatha's electrical grid. So Zevex, I kind of talked about them a little bit before when talking about Blink. But um, Zevex is the leading company for converting fleet vehicles, like example, our Maranatha school vans, into EVs. The conversion costs around $10,000, which I know at first does sound really expensive. But if Maranatha was planning on getting all new fleet vehicles, $30,000 per minimum, that's just an empty van, no seats, besides, of course, the driver and passenger. And, of course, added costs. We around saw, I think it would be $45,000 per van. So, compared to $45,000 to $10,000 to convert an already existing van, it would be really easy and really affordable. Um, so their systems connect, this is their main motor and uh, driver, and they connect to, for example, fleet vehicles like this, which, if of course you would know, that Maranatha does use these vans still, and uh, it would be very, very affordable uh, compared to other companies. And also, this is a company that's very reliable, they're located in downtown LA, they do a lot of their conversions in downtown LA, so we have to go across state borders, and it takes around uh, a week a week for it to be fully installed into each van, but it's going to take around two to three weeks to fully integrate, make sure everything's perfectly fine. And of course, it does help that they have a two to three year warranty regarding this. But our main focus, though, is adding new chargers. But this is a very, you know, good insight to what can possibly happen in the future if Maranatha does want to pursue this project. And thank you for listening. All right, we're done. Um, I do. Uh, so, th gentlemen, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for putting in the time. Really appreciate it. I do have a question about the electrical system. Um, you had mentioned that we need to have an assessment of our power grid. Um, did do you do an analysis on um, if we did not have the power in the garage, what that would look like, maybe even cost, and in terms of like what uh, if we don't have that. Um, there's a likelihood that if there is none, then we have to run electrical lines into the garage, and that costs a lot of money to cut into concrete and put in power lines. Um, was that a consideration in your research? Yeah, so I did a lot of research on that, and I found it very wild, depending on situation to situation, what we're cutting through. Mm -hmm. So, like, if there is no power whatsoever in the garage, and we have to go all the way from, like, the student center, it might cost, like, a lot of money, maybe up to tens of thousands of dollars. But if something's right there and we only need to go five feet, it might only be like a hundred, two hundred dollars. So it varies a lot depending on what we're cutting through, where the line needs to go, um, what do we need to upgrade to support the 240 volt wire. Okay. And we kind of touched base on this lightly. Um, I brought up that we would save $850. If you already have the system, which we are lucky to have, the one of the leading main generators down there, as we saw to the electrical grid. Mm -hmm. um, but like Andrew was kind of saying, estimated cost for our situation, if we didn't have that, would be eight hundred and fifty dollars plus per charger if we didn't have the network. But we're saving that because we already have good integration and the solar panels really do help with those cutting costs. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
And the reason we, we would bring in like a professional would they would give us a better estimate than we could ever give you guys at the moment. I see. Um, is solar power of another factor? Is it, it could we use solar and patch into these uh, devices and charging systems? Oh yeah, definitely. We this was one of our leading factors in the purposely choosing certain EV charges compared to other ones. There was um, other EV charges that we looked at that were around the same price and in some cases more affordable because they had integrated solar panels. But by choosing the ones we had, we saved actually a lot of money because those EV chargers are actually um, capable of connecting to our solar panel network, which is already fully installed. We have the power; it's already known. After, of course, a year of testing, we had no direct problems with it. And um, if we do, we can attach up to, I think, a math was 10 EV chargers, okay. and the solar panel network would still be fine. Okay. Understood. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank All you. Right. Well done.